Hi friends. Not quite ready to show the old 3D avatar just yet. So we'll play with this guy. I think he's kind of cute actually. He looks kind of neat from the side too. See? Bunch of teeth. Wow. Okay. Um, now as far as the fact that he's a dino or a, a reptile, Remember, we all have the reptilian brain, and we're akin to them, all right? Buried in the head of each and every one of us is evidence or proof, if you like, that uh, somehow we're related to these guys. Now, we're related to what the people once thought were the gods, too. You know, it's in our DNA. Doesn't it make you wonder that the scientists, the geneticists, haven't come out with it yet? I mean, you know, Alex Collier said for the Andromedans long ago that, uh, well, according to the Andromedans, we have 22 races tucked away in our DNA. So we're all hybrids, you know. Hey, not a bad idea to get used to. We need to break out of being identified as being these little bitty human things walking the earth. You know, we're not that. We're so much more. So on the one hand, we can use dino for that. And on the other, we could use it to say, okay, we all have a dark side. Might as well own it. Balance is the point. You know, the church has got us off balance and off base by having us reach for some kind of 3D perfection, even though that's an oxymoron. Perfection doesn't fit into 3D. This isn't the level for that. Plus, we're already perfect. You exist on all of those higher dimensions up there. Well, all I can do is speak for me. That's, see, that's what I've been given to understand is that I have a fully conscious uh, being that is another aspect of self that has its own life living on these other dimensions or densities or whatever we call them. And then, you know, not to mention all those other incarnations. Hey, you know, they play their part too. And the reality is, since everything is just now, they influence us all the time. And you got to see that the reverse is true. We influence them. So part of tying up all the loose ends before 3D is, you know, transmogrified or converted or whatever, this big change that we're going through, well, I'm finding for myself anyway that uh, a lot of the loose ends have to do with those other lifetimes. So, you know, they don't seem to bear, notice the word seem, they don't seem to bear any direct relationship to this one, but they do. I've been told that the cause, the major cause of the major pain in this body is due to fear of death. Yeah, right. That's what I said at first. Uh-uh, I can't identify with that. That's no part of my life. You know, there's no way I fear death. But then, well, the I that I am is, is just not this avatar. You see? And so what I was told was that I, I had a lot of death scenes that were traumatic and painful and, and that kind of thing. And uh, those lifetimes I, I was left in a quandary and confused and upset and angry and whatever else. And uh, that, that needs to be healed. So if you've got something that you've just done everything that can be done for it here in 3D, well, maybe you too uh, will find it fruitful to take a peek deep within. Talk to your spiritual guide or to your higher self. Meditate. Do, do whatever your thing is, you know. Check it out. And so, the beauty of that 
is, how easy it is to bring your current understanding back into those lifetimes. It's like connect the wires there. And all of a sudden, the, the, the full understanding transmits. And it's like an instant healing can take place. You see? Anyhow, not that I know much of anything. I'm, I'm just sharing my understandings, and I trust you guys to know that. Okay, uh, it's already five minutes in, and I haven't even started with this journal, so here we go. This is from... 921. It was the first of that day, and the Mayan day was four offering or water. Now, four is a four square, you know, the four directions. It's a very, very earth and 3D kind of a thing, like the cube. All right, here we go. Though I've been so good about trying to be all tucked in by midnight. Here it is, 2.30 a.m., and I'm swimming and dancing in love. I just went out for a, a few moments, barefoot, to bring in the bird feeders for the night, else the nocturnal mammals will have a feast. Now, too bad the budget doesn't extend to feeding them too, but hey, the birds are expensive enough. So, I bring in the two that they commonly raid Raccoons, mostly, I think. I've tracked a few and driven them about 20 miles away to the other side of the Arkansas River to turn them loose. I'm careful with that, though. I don't want to separate a mother and her little ones, though I suppose that by autumn they're mostly grown up. Still, I'm cautious. Besides, I don't want to borrow the live trap again. That thing is heavy enough when it's empty, let alone full of an unhappy coon. Did you know they hiss? Amazing. Well, when, you know, some of them are silent. Anyway, the sky is so beautiful, seen from here. I know there's activity up there. I keep asking for, and perhaps I'll start playing with the Bates method, working toward better vision, how I'd love to see things more clearly. The view is simply amazing. We are so very blessed. I talk to them, you know, the light beings up there and all that. I know they hang close to us, yet the higher frequency ones need no craft the Andromedans, or was it the Syrians through Patricia Corey, said they sometimes manifest what appears to be craft just for our sake. They can feel us desiring the contact, so in love they do that. Friends, we are all love. Can you identify yourself as that yet? Well, you are. Get down in there, deep into heart, and find your divine self. It's there. That's who you really are, or what. These things swiftly pass out of the world's abilities to corral them. That's okay, though, at least for those in heart. We know. We feel it all within. Love, this love of which I speak, is unmistakable, by the way. There's no faking it, and that's perhaps why it's in all our best interest to find our way into heart and fast. That's where we need to be to greet those who will disclose themselves, whoever they are. But we must not pay a bit of attention to either how they look or what they say. That's worthless, and it can be faked. No fakery gets by the heart, though. Go within. We are love. Love is the king and queen and the crown of it all, nothing less. Love is what is, and all lesser things spring from and take their identity, their reality, from love such as mercy and truth and even joy. 
When capitalized, these are the attri attributes of the divine. That's what I'm meaning. Not man or anyone else's poor imitation. Heart knows these things. Mind is not. We're rising up now, my friends. It's time and past time we were shedding identity with the clothes we put on called these bodies, these minds of our avatars in the play. Actors on a stage. Now sure, they are much more than that, yes. They are that through which divine love can manifest, can act. That is priceless and precious but we must no longer vest in them full belief. Why not? When we do, we are too easy to manipulate. The body, the mind's vulnerabilities, then become ours for no good reason that I know. We had some fun with that, but the play is coming to the close of this part of it. It's getting to be time to go home home in consciousness when it's capped. Parenthetically, see the transcript for subtle nuances such as this. You are love. Are you ready to be love in the hand of the divine? Are you up to it? And why not? Have a look at what aspects or elements of your being are dragging their heels. Chances are they're not real, so look with suspicion. Don't trust the mind. It does its best, but you are so much beyond what even it can comprehend, so don't turn yourself over to an inferior, dear ones. Enter your kingdom within. You are love. Always have been. <laughs> we just forget. Oh, how we'll laugh about that over, well, celestial tea or whatever it is we have for that purpose in the grand up above. We'll look at this time we've been going through here in 3D and simply marvel. Our eyes will be uncloaked, our sight piercing and clear, and we'll know everything about every encounter. Nothing will be hidden away. That's for 3D. You are love. Or maybe you are an aspect of love we call truth. I too could answer to that. Many of us are so loyal to divine truth that we'd follow it literally anywhere into anything. Well, we're here, aren't we? I'd say that qualifies. <laughs> Be in heart. You may be love's emanation we call mercy. As love, we are also compassion, straight from the heart of the divine, of source. When your eyes overflow with joyous, bountiful tears over something that doesn't even touch your avatar in any way, then you know you're closer to your true reality than at other times. Compassion really brings that out, the divine, the sublime beauty of divine love, its transcendence. Well, if we are that, folks, it's time we got to taking it in, wouldn't you say? No more time to sit on the sidelines and wait, well, perhaps for some sort of savior. That just leaves us vulnerable to the next ploy that the terrified powers that were come up with to deceive and control. You know it's coming, surely, don't you? This you can expect. Please don't trust. You can expect every play and ploy and scheme in the book, and then some, to be pulled in the next few months and few years. Count on it. No, and don't trust. Learn your way into heart firmly and well now. Listen from head, then go back and listen from heart. Learn now while there's no chaos about to distract. 
You might even practice on various videos. Listen to them from head, then from heart, and check out the differences you encounter. Get used to the feel of that, how different it is. At first it's subtle, but if you'll practice, you'll see it's, it's not so subtle. That it just seems subtle because we're so used to being in the head. Once we get used to being in the heart, we realize, oh my God, and this was here all along? And then we're tempted to say some dirty words about, you know, not having known it. Don't do that. Silly. Okay, then you might even get brave and listen to something you're pretty sure is disinfo or simply not true and do the same thing. Listen from head, then listen from heart. Once you get good about distinguishing them, don't bother to listen from mind anymore. Hear it all only from heart. Get comfortable there now when things aren't going crazy outside. I can hardly tell you what a valuable skill this can be for you in the craziness coming up, or likely coming up. I don't know. What do I know, huh? Whatever else there may be, and however it turns out, we can count on a good deal of simple craziness and things that will be challenging to interpret you know, for the mind. Heart isn't handicapped this way, so Let's get to practicing now. There are real differences that start out seeming kind of vague and maybe not even there, but guess what? That's because you're evaluating them from mind. Busted. <laughs> this really is fun. I mean, you might as well enjoy yourself while you're at it, right? Your heart will always keep you on the right track. There must be no fear either. There is literally no fear in heart, so you can't bring it in with you. It won't fit. It's alien territory to fear and to judgment too. If you're experiencing indulging in those energies, you're in mind. Guaranteed. Have no trust for mind in all of this. As I say, it does its best. It's just not the tool for any spiritual job. Be in heart all the time or as often as can be. You'll find a real and special sort of silence in there. An amazing one and words can't contain it. They, they, it just, whatever. These things have to be experienced directly. So quit asking about it and get with it yourself. Come in, check it out, step out of that mind. You can come to the journals for loads of help with such things. You can leave your questions for me too. Just don't be giving me loads of mental pointless questions, okay? It's on you to do your due diligence, to do what you can to sort it out. There will never be an end to the questions of mind. Never. Nor will it do your spiritual path any good to even have all of the answers. Got that? Hello. Time to break away from such reliance on mind. When you identify with your mind, then every one of your questions seems so very deep and important to you. But you're not mine, so that impression is false, dear ones. Well, actually, it's a true impression, but only to mind. And I ask you to be continually stepping out of that to come down into heart. Leave mind behind. It cannot help you make this journey, no matter how much it's your comfort zone. Wave it goodbye. You're moving on. Mind will now become your servant, my friends, as it was meant to be all along. We're going home, remember? Home in consciousness, home in heart. At some point, you have to let all of the questions just drop. They're not important. Truly, they're not. They are nothing. 
They are fluff. I know that's not how it seems to you just now, and that's okay too. Just be open. That's all you got to do. Just stick with the knowing that you are not this, not that, not anything in 3D. Or you're divine. You are quite literally source beams shining from the heart of the divine. You are that. Yes, you are. You are the presence of source right there where you stand. Soak it in, drink it down, claim it and make it your own. Get rid of the beliefs that say otherwise. If and as you are heart-centered while you do that, heart will echo the truth of it. Heart will agree, will lend you support. It's a time of divorcing the mind. It's an awkward time, may be the most awkward you've ever experienced because you aren't who you think you are. It's a stage though, it's not everlasting. That's nice to know, huh? And you're not ditching the mind. It's just being demoted from the driver's seat in your life into the back seat. That's all. No more will you answer to it. It will now answer to you. Right now, when you're still at least partly identified with it, this seems hard, it may seem crazy even, but time to realize what you're doing there is just listening to the mind's evaluation of this, not your own. Dive deeper and make contact with your own. Every time you get into hot water, into challenge, frustration, or trouble of some kind, do step back from it. Clear the mind. Take a pause. A few deep breaths. And now, center in heart. Look again at the very same thing, only this time from within. If you want it, you will find yourself able to step back and observe the mind at work. This is tremendously precious when it happens. It's amazing, actually. No one can tell you, though. You have to take this walk for yourself. Get off your behind. There is no one anywhere who can walk this walk for you. You've got to do it. Now or when? This is a major graduation we're walking into. There is literally no comparison of any kind between going through it centered in mind versus centered in heart. It's like being from two different galaxies or being in two different forms. The one does not compute to the other. I choose heart. Time to make your choice. We all had mind chosen for us growing up. It wasn't an option. Heck, they didn't even tell us we had this great, great spiritual heart hid within, much less how to work with it to access it. Uh-uh. They didn't want us to know, huh? They know better who and what we are than we do until we wake up. Chilling thought, isn't it? But they do, else they wouldn't plan things as they do keep us in the dark. All we have to do is identify with higher self, my friends, to step out of the thrall, the hypnosis, the many traps. Suddenly, they become clear. They will all just literally fall away from us as we do that. We don't have to fight and win. <laughs> we don't have to fight at all. Not one bit. Effortlessness. Just walk away is how I see it. We turn our backs on them and everything they hold dear, what we used to hold dear, and we walk out. Well, they flip out then and do all they can to stop us, but of course. But we are unconcerned. Remember, in heart there is neither fear, nor judgment, nor anything dark. 
We are not dark. Though we've been playing at that, we are not it. We are pure light, a light so bright it would dazzle your eyes and bring tears to them in awe and honor of its beauty, not from pain. We are the divine walking the earth robed in flesh. Well, get used to it. That's you. They can't touch the real you because you're light and love and at such a high frequency that the energy will repel them, will simply burn them, will destroy them if they get too close. Start to welcome and accept this now. Own it the best you can. Let it be a heart owning, not just mind. Mind can be informed of these things, of course, but you can't trust mind anymore to understand such things. It won't. We're all shifting our identities, my friends. Now is the perfect time for that, so be sure to keep it close to your heart. Just keep reminding the self how it is, what the score is, and how the powers that were don't even have a chance. This is the proper use of mind in support of heart. In reality, the powers that were have already lost. They could never win, not ultimately. They had their time of seeming to be on top and they enjoyed it. Well, not anymore. Let us reclaim our inner territory first. The rest will just follow. You'll see. You're reprogramming your subconscious mind along with the conscious one as you do this delightful work. Keep reminding yourself not just who, but also what you are. Your heart will join you in this, will even guide and direct you, but you've got to make the first steps and keep making them. We've all got to engage our free will. I feel sorry at times. Well, a little bit, for those who don't believe they have a free will. They are so very handicapped in what's up ahead just by harboring that belief. It won't sustain them through what's coming, not even. And that's pretty sad. You know, free will is the key they've got to use to turn the lock and get out, and they don't see that they have it and beliefs create. So, for them, that's their reality. You see, the dark side knows all too well about free will. That's why they use it against us so well, seemingly flawlessly, by keeping us dumbed down and sleepling and sheepling along, they find ways like bait and switch to get us to give them our assent. Once we've done that, our goose is cooked. We've fallen in with their program. We're not awake. Don't believe them. There's no need for any of us to be in that shape. The powers that were have tried so very hard to find ways and philosophies and conceptual schemes to convince us we're just robots or that everything, and I mean everything, is totally predestined. That won't work out well for them. They don't know it yet, but they're just asleep. That's what being asleep looks like, sleepling along while being manipulated and abused. But having given consent to it, we really can't complain. We walked willingly right into their trap. Well, not those who partake of these journals. No, not one of you need worry about any such thing. There's no need for this. You are already ascended, my friends. It's just a matter of catching up with that aspect of the self. Time isn't real not in the way it
plays out or seems to play out here. It's far, far nicer in higher dimensions. We're much more empowered around the workings of time. Stick with heart. Heart knows all of this. Know that you have an inner knower there in the heart who knows simply everything there is. You contact, you merge with that by going within. Do not look at this from the perspective of mind. That won't work. It's nothing like mind could even begin to imagine. And that's why it's so important to drop every single expectation you might have. All of them. Don't bother to ask those questions. Let them go. You can do that when you find heart. Mind is terrified of it. Whenever you're feeling fear, look to mind. When mind is still at least somewhat in control, it has fear around giving up that control. So if you can feel the fear, step back, disidentify a bit more. Know that you're not that. You're just not. And then you can just step back and watch it knowing you've seen through it and then another big chunk of what was in your way dissolves works like that it's time to make friends with just not knowing not knowing is tremendously fine did you know that well heart does so do you Make contact with that inner place where this is true. That's all. It's in there. Be empty. Be open. Wide open. It's not so hard. A good little bit awkward at first, I'll grant you. Mine simply squawks its displeasure out over this. Well, ignore it. That's right, ignore the screeching mind. So what if it's uncomfortable and upset? It's time to step back and simply know that's not you. Hello. You in heart? You hearing me? That's just mind. Let it go. I put mine in a corner on a stool and wearing a dunce cap now and then. <laughs> if it keeps it up. You will know a new measure of freedom that is simply shocking. Imagine that. Well, with heart, of course. It's time to take up maybe even a permanent station there within. You can do this. It's what I do, so it can be done. Time to listen, to speak, to act and everything from within. Let heart lead. Let heart drive, let heart live you. You just go along with the flow. It is incremental, this shift from head into heart, but it has some really wonderful high points as seeing things seem to click. They just suddenly make sense where they never did before, and you realize what a major perspective change you just made and how very different things look now, or at least they did for a moment or two, that's okay. It will make the shift. Just don't look back. Don't try to capture some lost moment from the past. Uh-uh. Instead, stick strictly, sternly, determinedly in now. Just this, no memories and no expectations either. Let all that go, little bits at a time. Don't let it overwhelm you, no need for that. There, that's enough to chew on, I bet. It's very deep because it's experiential. It's designed to draw you into your own shifting and hold your hand till you stabilize in the new space. Feel free to come back to the journals anytime. 
play them in the background, even if you're doing something else, even with the volume low. They will help, for there's a certain radiation that source can flow through us, and the energy belongs to source. You are love. You're surrounded, so enfolded and enwrapped in warm, loving arms of source and other light beings <laughs> that you will veritably burst with the crazy, wild joy of discovering just who and what you and all of us are. Time to pull our heads out of the game. Time to come back down into heart. Then we'll be ready for the next round, only we won't play it the same as we did this last one. This time we'll play the whole thing, never leaving heart, being the fullness of the Divine One that we are. Namaste and Source bless you abundantly, each one. Oh, and say your prayers. They make a real difference, especially when said from, guess where?